Hey, I was just thinking about what inspires a person to do a certain style or or they incline to um a specific way of doing their crafts or their mini books or their or their art in general. As many um you know in YouTube channels that you look through, especially if you're into crafting and scrapbooking, um, you have people that are into the shabby chic style because it's something that resonates in them to develop that type of work. And then you have those who like vintage or, or steampunk and so forth. Well, my style is basically on the creepy side. I like to do skulls and skeletons. And if you have seen my last video about the Halloween tags and cards, you can pretty much tell that it, it's my passion. So here's another tag just to give you an idea if you haven't seen the that video. I still got to glue the hand, the other arm here, but here's one of the skulls or well, actually the skeleton work that I do. This one's wearing a hat and has a Victorian um, vintage uh, feel to it. So w I've been collecting skulls and skeletons for as long as I can remember. And in my home, I do have a collection of skulls and a couple skeletons here and there. Um, why I collect skulls, I really do not know. Um, I've been doing it for years and it's just something that resonates in me and something that I have developed throughout my um, years doing my art and um, I just have a fascination for it. As you can see here, this is uh, the biggest skull I have in my collection. I just purchased this one um, from Michaels about a couple weeks ago and this is a, I think it's um, plaster. Yeah, it's a plaster skull and um, I'm thinking of using this uh, as a mold to do a mask, but I, I don't know if it's going to work out. But anyway, it will be a great decoration for your, as an addition to my collection. I also collect little skeletons like this one. Hopefully, one day I will be able to purchase or acquire a life size one. Yeah, <laughs> you heard me, life size. Like I said, I love this stuff. Um, I also uh, do art with um, skulls. I've made little masks. This one is entirely made out of paper mache. As you can see here on the back, it's made out of newspaper and glue and painted at the front and have glitter on there. And not only on this size, but I also do a larger size. This is what I'm doing as, um, this is a tattoo skull mask. And as you can see here, there's a lay. I'm not having done finishing this. I always start a project and then I move on to the next one, and I always go back to it to finish. So I have a lot of projects going on at the same time. So this is a skull, the tattoo uh, mask skull that I'm doing, and this is a lady's face right here, and she has wings and butterflies on there, painted in acrylic paint. Here's a rose with a, a dagger going through it, and I'm going to do some hearts here. Um, bleeding hearts. So this is a work in progress. Here's one that's almost done. I just need to add in the teeth and this is your typical red demon. And that has its horns. Here's another one, uh, another demon, but this one I'm, I haven't quite figured out what theme I'm going to go with this one. I do want to do it in green. Probably going to put leaves on it. I'm not sure yet. Um, this one also has its horns, and I added some teeth. And these are the skulls that you purchase at Michael's during the Halloween Halloween season. I also uh, sculpt my own uh, little heads here, and here's one as a paperweight. This one's done back in 2004, so I have been doing um, skulls for quite some time. Not only do I um, collect skulls and skeletons, and from from miniature um, sculptures to to heads like this, the skulls, but I also um, collect little figurines and such. Here's one of the the corpse's bride. 
of Tim Burton. This was given to me as a gift because those are my friends who know me. <laughs> I always love the creepy skeletons and all that. And creepy dolls too. Um, here's one of my dolls that of uh, a collection I have. And, and this is part of a collection of the Bleeding Edge Company. Uh, they have um, dolls of the Living Dead, but this one came particularly from a collection calling the Living Dead of Fashion. Um, this is a doll inspired of a five doll collection, and this one reminds me of Bonnie, of the duel of Bonnie and Clyde. As you can see here, she's been shot to death. <laughs> so you can see she has blood here on her neck and so forth, and she has complete with her hat. Um, each of these dolls comes with two two um, dresses, and then you can see her eyes are quite unique. She has black nail polish. <laughs> Love this doll. Another one of this collection is the Devil's Daughter, and she has you know her horns and she has long red hair. And her face is quite creepy too. I'm gonna put some lighting here so you can see her better. Yeah, creepy. So a lot of people don't walk into my bedroom. <laughs> she has bat wings that spread out about so far like that, giving her the complete look of the devil's daughter. So that's from the Bleeding Edge Company. I have more, but this video would be long if I showed you my whole collection. I also have a fascination for anything that's kind of creepy cute, which is kind of the goth feel to it, or the Lolita. Um, this is a doll from a Japanese company. Well, actually, I think it's um, from, I don't remember, I don't think it, well, actually, in Japan it's primarily sold. There, this is a Pulip doll, Pulip, and she has purple hair, and she has her goth dress. Um, I purchased this doll at the um, Comic Con at San Diego about two years ago. I love this doll because purple happens to be my favorite color, so she's perfect. So yeah, I like um, anime uh, Japanese pull-up dolls, and I wish I could afford a Blith, but for now I cannot afford one because this is not a cheap hobby. I do tend to save my money and then when the time comes I make my purchase so yeah. So that's basically what inspires me um, in my art and my drawings and is, is the stuff that just makes sense to me <laughs> when I write it on paper or, or when I mold it and sculpt it. It's just something that comes in within me. I can't help it. <laughs> Even though I do love the shabby chic and and the steampunk and all the, the you know the flowers and such but what resonates mostly in me and what comes out is is you know Halloween happens to be my Christmas just to make you understand so I will come up soon with more ideas oh and then basically that's it oh I want to show you another thing that I purchased um, just to close this video I've been wanting to do a cake about the size of this skull I want to do a skull cake for Halloween so I got really excited that the company Walton came up with this cake mold and as you can see here this is the one half of the cake and this is the other half and this is the front of the cake which is the skull and this is the back of the head and then once you're done um, baking you put them together with icing and then you have your skull cake um, I haven't tried it yet. I just got it uh, a couple days ago, and when I do make the cake, I'm going to do it in the the Katrina uh, traditional style, where it's just covered in flowers. And so, I do know how to make uh, sugar flowers, so I will show that in a, in a video sometime near Halloween. So yeah, fascination for skulls. So that's basically it for today. That's all I'm going to talk about, and for the next video, stay tuned. Bye.